Well, good afternoon and welcome to another Wayne Wednesday. Uh, if you can see the shelf behind me, I want you to know that this is only a small portion of the cornucopia I have regarding the gentleman we're talking about today. That is Mr. Stephen Sondheim, our premier writer for the musical theater in this era. Uh, an astonishing artist who is uh, always challenging himself and always challenging audiences. And I am so excited. We got so many questions about him. It's a funny thing for a theater producer because the common knowledge is that Sondheim shows don't tend to draw big audiences. The people who love musical theater really love Sondheim stuff. But I think maybe something has changed in the last few years and people are recognizing him not only for his superior intellect and the challenging kind of work he does, but also as a passionate a dramatist who tells stories we actually can relate to. So I hope this means that in the future, Music Theater Wichita will be able to do more of the Sondheim canon. If you want to know more about his life, I cannot recommend too highly the biography by Merrill Sechrist. He really opened up for this, which is not like him. And it's a wonderful book. And then, Finishing the Hat, his first volume of lyrics and explanations of all the thinking that goes behind them. It's much more of a biography and a commentary on our times and the world of the theater. And it was successful enough that volume two, look, I made a hat, also came out. Highly, highly recommended. I came along at just the right moment. I didn't get to see some of the great Broadway people of the 50s and 60s, but I arrived in New York my first time in 1970 as a naval officer. I was uh, a finalist in the All Navy Talent Contest, first in San Diego and then in the region. And then I got to go to New York for the finals and I won. So that was, you know, a lovely thing. But while I was there, I went to see Company on Broadway. It was still the original cast, minus Dean Jones, who left uh, almost immediately right after opening night. And there's quite a story there. And then I saw it again in Los Angeles when it came through uh, with George Shakiris this time playing the lead. And from then on, I've gotten to see the original casts of almost every Sondheim show, I think, and a lot of notable revivals. The revival of Company with Raul Esparza oh, a couple times. A reunion concert of the original cast in Long Beach, California. Follies, the original cast came to California and uh, I saw it four times there. Uh, an amazing show. I didn't see the London production, but the album is certainly interesting. I saw the Bernadette Peters revival a few years ago a couple of times, and I've seen it a number of places. I did see the original cast of A Little Night Music when I was hired to play in the show Good News. We went in uh, the fall of 1973, and this magnificent show had just opened. So I got to see it there, and then I got to see the national tour of it with Gene Simmons. Uh, I saw the revival with Catherine Zeta-Jones uh, a few years ago, very inexpensively produced revival. Uh, Into the Woods, the original cast with Bernadette Peters. The London production, which was very different and really interesting. Sweeney Todd, I think I mentioned before, the first time I saw it, I didn't know quite what to make of it. But by the end of it, I was so caught up in it, I went back to see it four more times. I saw the original production of that five times and just loved it. Uh, Sunday in the Park, I saw the original with Mandy Patinkin and Bernadette Peters, which was fabulous. But this happens to be the program for the recent revival with Jake Gyllenhaal, who I thought was amazing and quite wonderful. Uh, Craig Richardson asked if we've ever done Sondheim shows at Music Theater Wichita. My whole experience with it, I did the review side by side by Sondheim at a small theater in Massachusetts before I came here. And before I came to Music Theater Wichita, they did A Little Night Music in 1983. And they did A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum in 1981. And since I've been here, we've done Into the Woods in 92. Uh, Funny Thing Happened in 2008. And those are the only shows that we've done that are Sondheim music and Sondheim lyrics. Sondheim lyrics have been heard in Gypsy, which we've done twice, most recently with the magnificent Karen Robb, and West Side Story, which we've done three times during my tenure here. And uh, a little night music. We got some specific questions. That is probably the most 
sellable title. It has the song Send In the Clowns, and it's a, it's a wonderful, heady, intoxicating, European-flavored romance. A lot of mismatched lovers uh, over one night. But it is a thoughtful show. It's a long show. Everything in it is, is in a sort of subdued waltz time. I love the show, but it's, it's hard to get into the mood for it in the middle of a summer in Kansas. I will say also that because the Sondheim lyrics come at you with such complexity and nuance that for years I feared that the acoustics in the Century Two concert hall made mush of those lyrics. We got a lot of complaints during Into the Woods and in fact a lot of people left at intermission. Uh, maybe they thought it was over because it's a happy ending, but I think they just had to listen so hard. His lyrics keep coming at you. Now, of course, with a film version and every high school in the area doing Into the Woods, people know that show a lot more. Uh, Stephanie asked about Gypsy. She saw Bernadette Peters do it and just loved it. Uh, I saw Angela Lansbury as well. And, and actually my favorite of the ladies I saw in New York, uh, Tyne Daly, was wonderful. And then Patti Lapone recently did it, but I loved Tyne Daly, and I loved Karen Robb in the part. Uh, Matt Orsman asked about two really interesting things. I don't know if you've gone online to see, but Stephen Sondheim was born March 22nd, 1930. So he just had his 90th birthday. It's interesting, he shares his birthday, though not the same year, with Andrew Lloyd Webber. Andrew Lloyd Webber was born March 22nd, 1948. And the men have both had amazing careers and they're collegial with each other, but you tend to either sort of be a Lloyd Webber fan or a Sondheim fan. Uh, anyway, Matt Orsman watched online. They have an amazing 90th birthday tribute that was done right after COVID stopped performances all over. And all of these Broadway people, including our alumni, Kelly O'Hara and uh, Javier Ignacio and Claiborne Elder and Tom Sesma, all appear on this uh, special at different times. And in it, Linda Lavin, whom you might remember from Rhoda on Mary Tyler Moore Show, uh, she was in The Mad Show, an off-Broadway show in 1966, which had music by Stephen Sondheim's friend, Mary Rogers, the daughter of Richard Rogers. Mary Rogers wrote Freaky Friday, the book, and uh, Once Upon a Mattress, the musical. And they got to a point where Mary Rogers wanted to do one more song and the lyricists who were working on the show weren't available. And she talked to her friend Stephen and he wrote lyrics to a spoof of a bossa nova song called The Boy from Ipanema. But this is the boy from Tacaremba, La Tumba del Fuego, Santa Malipa, Zacatecas, La Junta del Sol y Cruz. And the joke is that is a real place, but every time the girl sings it, she gets breathless. And that was Linda Lavin. So here on this broadcast, just last March, we saw Linda Lavin doing a song she introduced 54 years earlier. Pretty amazing and terrific. Uh, Matt also asked about uh, Dick Tracy, one of Sondheim's odd movie projects. Warren Beatty got him to write a bunch of songs for a film version of the comic strip Dick Tracy and Madonna played a role in it and she sang one of the Sondheim songs sooner or later and it won the Academy Award for best song. So uh, Sondheim has an Oscar and he has seven Tony Awards and a Pulitzer Prize and any number of other awards. Matt asked if there was any talk of this being done as a stage show. It got into a big rights mess after the movie came out uh, Warren Beatty had negotiated with the comic tribune that held the rights to the Dick Tracy, Dick Tracy comic strip and Beatty was planning a sequel. They tried to stop him. There was an ugly lawsuit. Uh, they went bankrupt. He produced a TV special about Dick Tracy in 2008 and as recently as Comic Con in 2016 he said he was still working on a sequel to Dick Tracy as a film. So he still holds the rights, and I don't know that there's any stage work uh, planned. I haven't heard about that. Uh, my friend Kathleen Huber asked about The Frogs. This was a show that was done in the swimming pool at Yale in 1974, 
and it was a collaboration between Stephen Sondheim and Bert Shevelov. Their other collaboration is A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum. Well, they, they did this show, and they used the students at Yale, and uh, three of the cast members were Meryl Streep, Sigourney Weaver, and Christopher Durang. Later on, Nathan Lane got a hold of this script and expanded it, and Sondheim wrote some more songs. It's based on a play by Aristophanes, and in the version of it they wrote, the god Dionysus brings back to life William Shakespeare and George Bernard Shaw to try to save civilization with the arts. And uh, it was done uh, at Lincoln Center in 2008, and it got an okay response, but it only ran for 92 performances. Aaron asked about Sondheim's relationship with Anthony Perkins. Uh, very interesting TV special in the 60s called Evening Primrose, which starred Anthony Perkins of Psycho fame, and the leading lady was Charmian Carr, named Ring a Bell. I am 16, going on 17 in the movie of Sound of Music, the Liesel. Uh, it's a really interesting kind of Twilight Zone story about a young man who decides to hide out in a department store and finds a whole sub-society of people who hide out there at night. And it's, uh, it's got some beautiful songs. Take Me to the World and I Remember are two that we hear a lot. So Perkins was an actor in this Sondheim musical. And then with Sondheim, he wrote the script for a mystery movie called The Last of Sheila, which is really, really clever. If you've never seen it, you'll see Sondheim's much vaulted appreciation for puzzles and putting things together. Uh, I highly recommend it also. Nobody mentioned, but I think you ought to know about Stavisky. It's a film score that's for a, a foreign film, but Sondheim was asked to do the score, and it's really beautiful. And uh, he also wrote the score for a Warren Beatty movie called Reds. And there's a gorgeous song in this, Goodbye for Now, that got some airplay when the movie Reds came out. So Sondheim has dabbled in a lot of different fields. How many of you have the Sweeney Todd disco album? Uh, you, you may write me if you have one and we can compare notes. Um, okay, uh, other things that uh, have been asked. Uh, Company is a show that uh, Rob Challenger saw, it was the first thing he saw with on Broadway with Elaine Stritch. Uh, she was amazing in it. Uh, it's a show that is due for a revival on Broadway right now. They have flipped the gender of the leading character. So instead of Bobby the man, it's Bobby with an I uh, lady. And they flipped the gender of a couple of other characters. And in the cast are our alumni, Claiborne Elder, Javier Ignacio, and Stanley Bohoric. And they're all waiting to get back to Broadway. They did, I think, three previews before everything got shut down. So that's supposed to go back. Uh, Paul Witte asked if we could maybe do a whole program about Merrily We Roll Along. This is the saddest, saddest show. Uh, but like all the Sondheim shows, if it didn't work right the first time, there's always people who want to give it another shot and another shot. This was a story told backwards. So it was a story of three Freds who wanted to write songs and make a dent in show business. It's based on a play by George Kaufman and Boss Hart. And for a while there, Stephen Sondheim and Hal Prince seemed to have an amazing show open every year, and they were a great team. And this show was so traumatic for everybody involved that the team split up for years and years. They finally got back together, but it, this, this play was a rift. Our great alum, Ann Morrison, who has played leads for us in Sunset Boulevard and Oliver and Good News and On a Clear Day and many other things, was one of those three young people who had the leads when Merrily We Roll Along was cast. And uh, it opened on Broadway in 1981. And it's a story of people who age from their 20s to the 40s. But when we see them in the whole first act of the play, they're in their 40s, edging their way back to the 30s. And then after intermission, they're in their 30s, going back to their teen years. And the show, unfortunately, wasn't very good for these three actors in their 20s until it got to the very end of the evening, and then they were playing the right age. So it's been a problem. How do you cast Merrily We Roll Along? Do you cast people in their mid-30s who can look young? It's, it's a tricky show, but Richard Link later, who did a film called Boyhood, which he filmed over 12 years, 
has gotten the rights to this show and is filming it now with Ben Platt, Beanie Feldstein, and Blake Jenner. And they're going to be filming it over the next 20 years. I'd like to say I'm going to be around to see it. But they're going to let these three actors age naturally from their youthful selves now onto what will they look like 20 years from now. So uh, an interesting project, and only somebody like Stephen Sondheim is likely to inspire something like that, I think. Oh, Paul Witte also asked if I had a meeting Sondheim story. I don't have a very colorful one, but I am so in awe of him. Uh, I was in a, a show in New York called Tin Types, and he was a silent investor. You didn't see his name on the playbill anywhere, but he helped invest in it, and he came to see it pretty often. And then the William Inge Festival right here in Independence, Kansas, salutes different authors different years, and one year it was Sondheim. And I always help out with that, and I was hosting the, uh, the night of his tribute. Bernadette Peters was the guest star. And I did the uh, wolf number from Into the Woods. But at the dinner the night before, which is a more casual affair at a country club, Sondheim was saluted, and I did two songs that night. And I have to tell you, I am not somebody who gets very nervous performing. I feel I'm going to do the best I can. That's all there is. But with Stephen Sondheim, you didn't want to miss a single note value. You didn't want the pitch to be a bit iffy. And uh, it was so nerve-wracking, but he was so gracious afterwards. So I think that's enough about that. I really thank you for the questions tonight. Um, I hope that was interesting to some of you. Uh, asked me other things, and don't forget, on Disney Plus, this Friday, they start showing Hamilton. You can join Disney Plus for $6.99 a month. You can cancel anytime. They have a whole lot of musical plays and films on the Disney Plus channel. I think it's well worth it. And we have two Hamilton alumni, Aaron Clemens and Julius Thomas, who've been spending a bit of time with us lately. Julius did a concert in February, and we were supposed to go see him play Hamilton in San Francisco, but it got stopped. And Aaron Clemens is currently with the Broadway Hamilton Company, which is on hiatus. And she's with her family in Oklahoma. So she came up a couple weeks ago and we filmed a wonderful concert with her on the empty stage of the Orpheum Theater with Jesse Workington playing. And that'll start airing later this month. So be sure to pay attention to that. That's a special for our Spotlight Society members. They get free admission. Or you can buy a ticket to Aaron's concert online for $20. But free tomorrow starting at 5 o'clock Aaron and Julius engaged with Nancy Reeves from our staff and me in a conversation about what happens backstage at Hamilton, what it's like to work on that show, what it was like for Julius to go with Lin-Manuel Miranda to Puerto Rico for the uh, humanitarian efforts they did in doing a production of it there. It's a fascinating hour-long chat with the two of them. And you can see that on our Facebook page starting at 5 o'clock Thursday. So I hope I'll see some of you at Movie Club tonight or this week. And uh, thanks for tuning in for what we're doing online.